Good morning, Zodiac, and welcome. It's the Soul Family Read for the 2nd of November, Tuesday. Uh, I looked it up. I drift further and further from reality. I have an idea I came up with, and uh, I don't know, midpoint, Neptune, Saturn, in your chart, or I forget. Go to your midpoint. It turned out to be 12.5. I don't know why I just thought of this. I think this is where the veil is. This is where the energy is thin and we can connect with spirit and walk right through the midpoint, Neptune, everything that's unreal, Saturn, everything that's real, Saturn, everything you wrap your knuckles on, Neptune, everything you cannot wrap your knuckles on, midpoint, boom. Where is that for me? Uh, <laughs> Mars at 10. Jupiter at 15. Midpoint between Mars and Jupiter is where that is. Coincidence? There are no coincidences. Like Gibbs says in NCIS, there are no coincidences in a crime scene investigation. Theory old visions, illuminated tarot deck today, guys. As usual, I like how it shows up. I just saw the bottom. I already pre-shuffled a lot as I was out here grounding myself been tough lately um, just physically uh, to the point where you know I don't want to do a reading where I'm physically stressed to, to the point where I can't focus so I have to pick my times and I was listening to some Michael Fronte to get the energy up yeah so today I'm just going to do a four card checkup on where we're at um, you know I'm still thinking about the new moon it's going inside for me, um, going into the depths. Um, if there was ever a time to go into the basement, and you go in there because, you know, you want what's real. And I'm a Venus and Scorpio, so I'm going to love you because of your darkness. I am going to love you because of your demons. I will meet them, I will greet them, and I will live with them. Venus and Scorpio, we have that ability. Now, what it comes down to for me, for love in a lot of ways, is uh, uh, can I and do I want to live with those demons? Um, but we all have them. So it's that uh, myth, you know, where you have to go to hell, you have to be kidnapped and uh, taken into the depths of hell. And um, we go through that time, the dark night of soul. This could be a little bit like that. Uh, it doesn't have to be as dark as I don't believe. It's about depth and about uh, it, shadow stuff, but real depth and real can be real connection here. The sun and the moon are coming together. I mean, for me, it's like new moon is all about like realizations. Um, I'm about manifestation, uh, but it's a great time to think about what we want and just make plans. You could even say uh, every month. That's the time to sit down and do the budget. There's Saturn. Um, and make your plans at the new moon. And also, Scorpio energy, uh, this could be right on my Venus. It's about looking at the flesh and blood of love, you know. It's, it, you know, it gets me. Venus is uh, is exalted in Pisces. And I, I guess I get it. I've, I've been there, Venus in Pisces. A lover um, but um, it's it's unconditional um, but I think part of the reason it's unconditional because it doesn't really get into the blood and guts you know uh, the Neptune energy it keeps it in Pisces a uh, uh, kind of a, um, a spiritual and uh, ethereal uh, to a degree where uh, you're not getting the kind of hands-on um, kind of feeling like a meat and bones and flesh and you know sex tied up in Scorpio for that reason you know for Venus and Scorpio sex is love I mean people say well you know you can't confuse sex with love it's, there is no you know but uh, you know uh, sex is also epiphany sex is my soul sex is spiritual you know uh, the table spiritual everything spiritual that's that's thing Everything here that seems, I don't know, physical is spiritual. Everything we can wrap our knuckles on, we, we also can't wrap our knuckles on. Because, I mean, there's a concept of this table for me. 
you know, it's, uh, at some level that's all it is. So, I'm digging it um, here. And I got a strong Sagittarius too, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Midpoint, Saturn, Neptune, right at the midpoint for me, and all in my natal of uh, Mars and um, Mercury here. Um, so, um, let's go ahead with that in mind. <laughs> That's my feeling right now, is the Fool. I'm feeling like the Fool. It's uh, it's a good energy. I love the Fool. I always say I love the Fool. It's also Aries energy to me, you know. Fool always be Aries. Following the instincts, um, you know, they always say, you know, well, Aries, it's the babies. You don't really think about the consequences, but... You know, Aries have an amazing instinct, you know, they can uh, react, uh, and it seems to be without thinking, but I believe the unconscious mind is vastly uh, more um, powerful, and that's where the moon comes in, our moon represents all that, it's vast, it's the iceberg that's underneath the water that we don't see, and somehow this full energy is us tapping into that. Um, and it's, you know, fearless, it's joyful, joyful, the fool is full of joy, it's like, yay, <laughs> jumping off the cliff with my umbrella, it's wonderful, um, and uh, optimism, there's a lot that goes with this, you know, if you're a spiritual person, like I noticed uh, as for years as an astrologer, mostly in tarot, uh, a lot of people don't want to really acknowledge that because there's so many people around them that are not in the full energy. Um, so, you know, this can be people uh, saying to you, are you, are you okay? I mean, that's pretty out there. What you're, you're talking about angels? What? I mean, uh, what are you talking about energy? And, um, you know, um, it's sort of like the whole society we're in, you know. And I always say, like, even a strong, very strong fish, very special fish you know if, if it swims in a polluted ocean its entire life it's going to get to it and that's kind of where we're at we're like swimming in this uh, polluted ocean this whole society uh, by and large is materialistic and it's going to disregard and disparage uh, this kind of energy of the fool um, and always with the usually with restrictions and limitations of Saturn admonitions control it's like, because the fool in Aries can't be controlled. Won't be controlled. This is in our blocking. I think we can look at this one as two of pinnacles reversed. And that's not about making decisions. That's the engine. The electrical engine, too, is the two of pinnacles. It's a positive and negative. It's flowing. The yin-yang, to me, it's like just flowing. And, but it's very personal. It's using our personal energy. To manage our lives in such a way it's kind of virgo -y to me because it's sixth house it's about routines having good routines managing things this is the problem and i can get it it's like how do you both release yourself into this non-spiritual realm what i'm talking about going back to the midpoint of uh, your natal saturn and neptune you can figure that out let me know if you want me to it's what i do um, this is kind of this energy of really letting go, really releasing, fully believing, totally trusting in spirit. You know, my friend asked me once, said, seriously, you're going to move to this new place and get this place right here just because you feel it feels right and that's how you're going to choose? And I'm like, exactly. So this is the energy with the Fool and Aries too. Um, you don't really stop. You don't stop for a second to question your feelings. If it feels right, it's right. If that sounds trite, uh, I, uh, maybe I'm not conveying the power of this. Because this Aries energy, you know, everybody else in the Zodiac, it, it, say it was one of them games, you know, around the world or something, and you got, there you go. And you got the 12 signs. And by the time everybody else has kind of figured out basically what to do and read all the instructions, Aries is already at the third point. And getting up you know and they're they're quartered away through uh, the maze or whatever right um, and you know they can they manage to pull it off when it's a high uh, vibing of Aries energy of this fool here going for it 
not being afraid, not overthinking, not really thinking so much, you know. Um, going because you've learned to trust your feelings, you know. And this can be like in reverse. It's like not really trusting our feelings, not feeling grounded. Yeah. And there's eight of swords. And this is the advice from spirit. Now, spirit's not going to advise us that we should be in an eight of swords energy, I don't think, here. Um, so it's trying to give advice about the energy that's that's really going on with this reverse two of pentacles. And you know, for me, this is physically a lack of energy. Um, and it really is as if uh, I feel like my soul and my spirit is, is right here, right here. But my body is just about, I can't hardly function, it's so bad physically, um, just every day now. Um, so just getting back to feeling normal, and um, it does have me in this eight of swords energy, I admit to it. You know, it feels like it's just going on for too long, too long, you know, and I just want to be back to feeling like I can do this. I want to go outside and just enjoy the day. You know, I want to wake up and just feel fully uh, physically uh, as good as I feel emotionally and spiritually, really. Um, bottom of the deck I have to weigh in here with the Knight of Swords that's definitely connected to the Eight of Swords this is the coming at you coming at you Eight of Swords here I mean Knight of Swords this is Mars uh, energy taking actions here overall energy Eight of Swords you can see that I think pretty good in this light and just how does that make you feel thoughts Yeah, it's very directly for me. It's like lately, it's like, I don't know, it hit me yesterday and, and I, I'm very careful about my intentions and thoughts. So I catch it and I'm like, negate that, but it kind of surprised me, you know, and it's what it was just kind of like, maybe this is it. Like, I'm never going to get any stronger, any better. This is it. This is what I got to work with until I die, you know, um, eight of swords. It's a pretty hard thought. And I caught it, and I was like, jeez, man, I saw, like, how tired I'm getting. I'm getting tired of it. Six of Pentacles, up seeing that show up. This is the outcome. I'm telling you, man, you know, for the full, starting out with the full energy, this is pulling ourselves up by the bootstraps. Um, this Knight of Swords is taking action, particularly in terms of communication. In my own mind, you could say, say, this was something happening in my own mind. Hey. Maybe this is as good as it gets, Dave. It's just like downhill from here. And you're just going to have to accept it that you got a, a bad ride physically, you know. Because you've been trying like for a year. It just keeps like every time I get up, I get slapped back down physically. <sighs> yeah. I just don't want to give up. And I think this promises that, you know, I'm doing the right things. Believe me, I got help. You know, my girlfriend's a nurse, a chiropractor. She's a curiandra. Uh, amazing knowledge of natural substances just even the park over here she's explaining well that you can use for a fever and that over there is a diuretic and um, so believe me uh, I'm doing everything I can and I, I think too with the six of Pentacles I feel again at least for myself so I include myself in this reading uh, it's a little bit of the energy of karma kind of, I feel like slamming into me absorbing absorbing and I think this is cool because Sagittarius season is coming with the eclipse in Sagittarius. And I think that's going to be all kinds of uh, release of this stuff. And, you know, talking about the, the Venus being in, in Scorpio, for me, uh, on my Venus, uh, in this new moon right there at 12 degrees, um, Scorpio. Uh, is a time where we might go in and, and, and really deal with some of the darkest uh, things in the basement of ourselves here when that Scorpio energy um, but out of it with the six of Pentacles I see that as very personal personally taking control rolling up the sleeves doing what needs to be done um, you know and it's kind of like to me it's like steady as she goes you know it's, I feel like Spirit's trying to say, it, it, I know it's frustrating, you know, um, but just 
just steady at the helm, steady as she goes. Alright, that's what I'm getting guys, thank you.